In a previous video, I assembled the ZX HD expansion, allowing me to connect my ZX Spectrum to a modern HDMI monitor. Click somewhere here if you want to check that video out. I'm planning a mini documentary about the ZX Spectrum, covering its history and showing off how it works. But before I do that, I need to upgrade the RAM in my unit, which is this guy over here. So the strange thing about this unit is that on the back you can see that it's actually labeled as a 48K unit. However, when I boot the system up and do a RAM test, all I get is 16K. Now, since many applications and almost all games need 48K of RAM, I need to upgrade the thing. So I'm gonna document the RAM upgrade process and get some B-roll of the internals of the system whilst I'm at it. So you can also see how it works. So this is the symptom of the problem that I'm having. As you can see, I'm trying to play a game. In this case, it's uh, this one here, uh, Boulder Dash, okay? And uh, this is supposed to need 48K of RAM. And my Spectrum is in fact labeled as a 48K model. However, you can see the error message here, RAM top not good, uh, which kind of unintuitively tells you that there isn't enough RAM and I looked it up online and that's exactly what it means. Um, so let's use a basic command to see how much RAM this system actually has. So there's this command that I found on this website here. So uh, print peak, I'm gonna print peak 23733, 23733, enter. Ah, and as you can see, the output is 127. So apparently, according to this website that I'm viewing here, it, it said uh, for a 48K machine, the result will be 255. For a 16K machine, the result will be 128. But for a 48K machine that's running in 16K mode, the result will be 127, which that's what we have here. So some re for some reason, this, uh, this spectrum here uh, is either a 48K model that someone might have downgraded previously, or perhaps half the RAM or, or some of the RAM chips aren't working properly and it has less usable RAM. Regardless, this needs to be fixed. Okay, so here we are ready to start the upgrade process. So I ordered this kit uh, from a website called Retroleum, which I believe is retroleum.co.uk. And as you can see here, we have the <coughs> 16K to 48K Spectrum Upgrade Kit Fitting Instructions. And basically this section here is the important part. Uh, it tells you where to put which chips. And here there are even some graphical instructions about how to do it. Now, technically speaking, this kit is meant to upgrade a 16K machine to 48K. However, my machine is already a 48K one or it's supposed to be, but as I explained earlier, it's acting as a 16K. I have no idea what this sticker is here, but uh, more about that later. Anywho, um, so what that should mean though, is that I can simply replace the RAM chips without having to solder anything. Uh, so there are instructions here for what to solder to what in order to make the spectrum believe uh, or recognize rather that it is in fact a 48k machine. Now, my machine already knows it's 48k, it just has less RAM, so technically I can skip the soldering stage altogether, which is a good thing because my soldering skills are, let's just say, not good. Hmm? Anywho, so let's go ahead and open this. Uh, so this is the solder wire thingamajiggy that hopefully I will not need. And this is the kit itself. And I'm getting stuff all over my spectrum here. Okay, so let's open this guy. And see what we get. Okay, so those are them. Uh, now, I don't know how well you can see these. Let me just try and get them. This is not easy. 
Okay, so there you go. Those are the chips there. And as you can see, um, there are 12 chips in total and they're not all the same. Okay, so you can see some of them are labeled B42922, some of them are labeled SN74, blah, 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 blah. So you need to know where to put these basically. And this is where the handy instructions come in. Uh, of course, you can find this stuff online, guys. Uh, but which tells you what goes where. So I'm gonna keep these guys here. Now, of course, we need to open the spectrum. Um, now, there's actually an interesting backstory about this spectrum, guys. Um, I had a friend of mine who uh, unfortunately passed away um, at a young age. Uh, he was 40-something, um, uh, definitely not 50. And uh, we met uh, at the Malta Linux user group. And uh, this guy, let me just tell you, besides being a genius, he was also one of the funniest persons I've ever had the pleasure to meet. And uh, one of his hobbies was collecting computers, not necessarily retro ones. I believe this is actually something he used to use when he was a kid. Um, uh, and anywho, um, unfortunately he passed away. And a couple of months ago, his widow contacted me and said, uh, I need to clean out the garage and I found all of these old um, computers that Philip, because that's his name, that Philip used to have. Will you come and see what there is and take it? And I was more than happy to oblige. And this puppy, along with another one, which is slightly worse for wear, uh, were included. <laughs> so that's how I ended up with this guy. Anywho, so we've unscrewed it. And what you need to do here is you can see there are those two ribbon cables connected to the main board. Uh, so what we need to do is actually just gently remove them. I actually had to replace these because when I got this, uh, these had been torn. And besides from that, it's very, very common for these cables to actually perish over time, needing to be replaced anyway. And you can't just replace the um, ribbon cables. You need to replace the entire membrane that goes underneath the motherboard, which, on, which then includes these two. Luckily, they're very cheap. Again, I bought them from Retroleum, and they're actually better quality than the ones in the Spectrum ever wear, so they're not meant to perish again. Right, so uh, this can go here for now. So here we are, here are the chips. As you can see, they're all installed. Uh, it's just that <laughs> they're not working. So it says here, install the eight 4164 RAM chips into the eight sockets marked 15 to 22. Okay, so the chips need to be installed in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, kind of weirdly, these chips here, one, two, three, are soldered to the board, whereas these guys are socketed. Now, I have no idea why that would be the case. Uh, I honestly don't know whether this board came like this, or maybe the previous owner tried to do something with it. Regardless, uh, I can't replace one, two, three without desoldering them, which I can't do right now. So for now, I'm just gonna try and replacing the ones I can and hope for the best. Right, so let's go ahead and remove these guys. Uh, hmm. Which is apparently easier said than done. Okay. Hmm. Okay. So let's try with the pincers here. Okay, so that's one. Uh, so now I'll do the rest, I guess. Okay, so that's those chips removed. Now I need to put the 4164 chips in here. All right, so the orientation should be pretty much the same as all the rest, meaning with the text uh, facing this way. So I guess we can just plonk that here. All right, that's not too bad. So I guess it helps to get one side slightly in before 
and then just doing the other side gently. Okay, so that's done. Now it says uh, install the 74LS32 or 74HCT32 chip into the socket marked IC23. So IC23 is, I can't find an IC23 anywhere. Hmm, okay. Uh, maybe this is not needed because of the version of the board that I have. Maybe I have <laughs> honestly guys, I'm running blind here. Uh, let's see Moments later. Okay, so apparently um, I Don't need to install the other chips uh, because they're already okay for this particular model So hopefully just replacing these five chips will be enough. I Have my serious doubts on this, but I guess there's only one way to find out so let's go ahead and reassemble the guy and see whether we get any success. So here we are, it's moment of truth time. The upgrade process was a bit shorter than I expected, but then again, it, it kind of does make sense since all of the chips that were sent to me are meant to upgrade a 16K machine to a 48K one. Whereas I already had a 48K machine, which was acting as a 16K one. Now, apparently from some further research I've carried out, what happens is that um, during the manufacturing process, some of the RAM chips that Sinclair was using in these machines were faulty. And so what would happen is that they would be making a 48K machine, test it, find out that the RAM was faulty, and what they would do is they would just relabel it as a 16K machine. So basically they wouldn't have to throw away the faulty chips, they would just sell an even cheaper version. That's probably what happened to my unit here. Now what's weird though, is that my unit is labeled as a 48K. Now Spectrum, uh, Sinclair never did that. You know, when a machine was 16K, they would label it 16K. You know, they weren't trying to fool anyone. They were just being economical. So I kind of wonder why mine wasn't working. Regardless, uh, the upgrade is now done, so hopefully when I run the peak command again, I should get a nice 255. So, let's see. So, we need to type print and then peak 23733. Eureka! 255. So that means, guys, that this, uh, this Spectrum is actually running with 48K of RAM, uh, which is fantastic. So that should also mean that I should be able to play a game because it now has enough RAM. So let's give it a shot. So I've typed in the command. Here goes nothing. Program, Boulder. Well, something seems to be working here. All right. Now again, I'm not gonna be showing you the game itself uh, today, although it's apparently a really good game. Uh, I just wanna see the thing load, and uh, this loading screen here is very promising. Well, what do you know? It's actually working, so I'm so glad that this worked, guys. Uh, I actually loaded this from the actual tape. It took a couple of tries, but I finally got it working. Uh, so as you can see, I now have a fully upgraded Spectrum uh, with 48K of RAM. Uh, so now it's ready for the mini documentary. Of course, it would be a pretty stupid documentary if I couldn't actually show a game running. So now this thing is running well, so I'm really, really happy with this. Uh, you can actually see some demo gameplay there in the background. And uh, this is actually the first time I'm uh, playing a game on the ZX HD, which I showed in a previous video. So it's actually pretty nice to see it working so well as well. And maybe I'll play around with some of the different interlacing modes that it has to get an even better display. In the mini documentary, I plan to cover the history of the Spectrum, uh, its internals as, and a basic overview of how it worked. 
and also also I'll show you some very basic basic programming and this game which is currently the only game I have but hopefully I'll start building a library and maybe who knows I'll even get an SD card interface for this thing so I don't have to rely on cassettes so if you'd like to see more of this spectrum and hopefully other retro technology in the future uh, okay something happened so, if you'd like to see more of this spectrum or hopefully other retro technology in the future, please be sure to like and subscribe, besides it really helps the channel. I'll catch you in the next one and hopefully soon in the Spectrum documentary. And until then, thanks for watching.